we have with us prakalpa shankar the co-founder at atlan and which she herself called as home for data teams and the team has recently raised 16 million dollars in series a funding round so we have a very organic story at atlan uh, we started out as a data team ourselves uh, trying to solve uh, large scale problems like national health care and poverty alleviation using data science for a very diverse team uh, we were you know analysts engineer scientists business the whole gamut of what it takes to actually implement large scale data projects right and so while the kinds of projects we were working on we were working with you know organizations like the united nations and world bank and the gates foundation uh while these projects sound really really cool the reality for us every day in only was a ton of chaos uh our slack channels were cons- constantly buzzing with information like what does this column name mean or a number on a dashboard is broken and we don't know why uh and you know believe it or not our team was spending 50 to 60% of our time just dealing with these kinds of issues which is ridiculous if you think about how hard it is to actually hire and attract data science talent in the first place and less engineer science of business um you know they're one of the most interdisciplinary teams ever created and each of these people have their own tooling preferences and skill sets and their own dna in the way that they work and as soon as we started hitting a little bit of scale uh was we just couldn't continue to scale like that um uh, so we actually started building up atlan as an internal tool for our own team to help our team collaborate better uh and uh, reduce the collaboration overhead in our team right um, over a couple of years made our team about six times more agile we went on to do things like we built into national data platform we were a global partner for the un on the sdgs you know we spent a ton of time self getting the product right we're, we're sort of building a collaborative workspace for a modern data team to think of what it gets her best for an engineering team or a figma as for a design team that's what we're trying to do for a modern data team uh and um, honestly i think fundraising is is actually a lagging indicator not a leading indicator right so i think right. uh, you know the, uh, we've, we've been growing pretty fast uh we have some great customer love from you know uh customers around the world Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that is is what actually fueled the fundraise. So it's been a long time coming. Wait, it's been a very organic journey. Um, you know, at Social Cups, we started as a data team ourselves. Very few people realize how difficult it is to make a data team yeah. collaborate effectively. Uh, many data projects today are failing. It's just because data teams are one of the most diverse teams ever created, and it's incredibly hard to get a data engineer, an analyst, a scientist, because these are on the same plane of information. you can go on to say really that the next decade is is really the decade for data right uh, you know companies big and small if they want to be successful need to really invest in internal data and the way that they're using and leveraging data fastest growing companies in the world uh, you know right from a uber to an airbnb uh, a large attribute a lot for their success the way that they use data for strategically for everyday operation uh, i think that that what about a decade behind uh, with data uh, but that's starting to happen with data roles like chief data officer head of data platform head of analytics they're becoming very very mainstream to a company that even hits a little bit of scale uh, and i think uh, we realized that we as a data team ourselves had a very unique perspective to how to make this data function inside organizations successful um and that's how we got to uh, we got to this junction of how do you truly democratize data in, in large scale organization um i think the best analogies to think about this are just what we know from other ecosystems devops became one of the most important functions to actually enable uh, us to build software in a rapid like way right and i think tooling was built around that ecosystem in some ways even in non tech industries right if, if you think about the world of data it is complicated because of data ops is an interesting uh, uh sort of very new function in some ways which is talking about how do you really use principles of agile and devops and lean and apply it to the data supply chain uh, and apply it in a way that ultimately we are able to create agile data functions agile data teams uh, that are able to actually serve the needs of the business um 
uh, and so we're very excited to be a very early company in that in what is now a new function getting pioneered to be recognized by Gartner as a cool vendor in data ops. They're pioneering the board for data ops, um, and you know we're we're very excited to be part of that that journey of saying how do we really embed uh, agile uh, as a part of the day to day sort of operations of data inside an organization. Sure. So Atma operates on you know behind the scenes on a fairly open source stack. We we love open source uh, and you know we contribute back uh, quite a bit to the community. Uh, behind the scenes, we leverage ecosystems like Apache Atlas, Ranger, um, and you know front end we use things like Go, uh, JavaScript framework. So uh, our engineering team, shameless plug, our engineering team is on the cutting edge of the best tooling that exists in the ecosystem. So if you're excited, we are hiring. I think there are two things, right? I think um, every job that we hire for has specific skill sets that we're looking for, right? So I mean, obviously, the skills that we're looking for in a backend engineer is very different from the skill set that we're looking for in a content marketer, right? Uh, and we're hiring across, which means that each of these functions, we believe in hiring specialists. Um, we believe that you know, I think what people really underestimate is how quickly people can grow if you have the right attitude. Um, so, for example. Our website team. When we were building our website, you know, the question that we, the first question we started with was to say, what is the best B two B website in the world? Um, and the inspiration was, you know, companies like Stripe, which, you know, if you've ever seen their website, one of the most amazing websites out there in the world, right? Or, uh, and we take that and translate that to every aspect of the company, right? Uh, and we start there by saying, what is if you want to be one of the top one percent of this in the world? If you want. Um, everything that you do to actually be heralded as a case study in in that particular community or function, how do you do that? And we start there, and I think from there we work into uh, how do we go about execution. Uh, and a lot of that tends to, you know, we've never done that before, right? Like a large part of our team is fairly young, uh, but we set the bar high, we learn, um, and we, you know, we we put in our one twenty percent to get there. Um, and I think that attitude as as hard as it seems, you know, it seems like it's a pretty easy, simplistic thing to do, right? Like, you know, before you start something, Google, figure out yeah. the best case practices, figure out what that bar should be, and then just execute towards it. But it's actually a very, very hard um, skill set, especially as you know people grow and become a lot more experienced. We see that you know you end up losing that uh, that hunger. Um, and so I think that is really what we, we really look for in every single position that we hire for uh, people who are going to really raise the bar uh, of, of that function. Yeah. So we've been growing really, really fast. <laughs> we've grown some nutty number like 16x or something in the last six months. Uh, and so a large part of the focus for the next a uh, couple of years is going to be, you know, how do we continue to sustain that kind of rapid growth? Uh, we operate in a pretty open space in what is increasingly called the modern data stack, uh, and we have the ability to build a category defining company in that space. And so, how do we sort of go and be become that company? Uh, and so, a large part of focus on sort of go to market distribution, uh, things like that. But I think the most important thing is. Just building better products for the data community. Uh, at the end of the day, our users, our day-to-day -day data practitioners, everything that drives us is to say, how do we bring a smile to the face to a data practitioner every day, right? Like, how do you how do we make your life easier? How do you, how do we save you a couple of hours a day? Uh, that's what drives us every day. Um, and I think we've still scratched the surface of what collaboration uh, in a data team should look like, right? I'm a second time entrepreneur now, so I think I have like gray hairs and words of wisdom. <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> honestly, just believe in yourself, uh, set the bar high. Your life is going to be a ton of people saying that it's not going to work. Uh, and that's okay uh, because it's your job to prove that uh, it is going to work. Uh, and I think as long as you keep dreaming, uh, as long as you keep working really hard, putting your head down and trying to be the best um, and focusing on your customer more than anything else, uh, things will work out.
yeah i hope i hope i'm still on this journey myself so 